Pokemon Mount 31, let's take a look at slopes of non-vertical lines. And in terms of slopes of lines, for the most part, I get to assume you've seen this at some point in your math career also. Most of chapters two and three are supposed to be review, which is part of why we go through them so quickly. But I, I don't know how much time it's been since you've had your last math class, so we do want to review slopes of lines a little bit. Now, when I say a slope of a non-vertical line, it can be a positively sloped line, a negatively sloped line, maybe it's even horizontal, but, oh, that's horizontal. Um, but in terms of non-vertical lines, what I'm saying here is, I'm talking about all lines that aren't vertical, that don't go up and down. When we have vertical lines like this, they've got their own slope issues, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. But for the slope of a non-vertical line, all right, the slope of a line, M, represents the change in Y over the change in X. Given two points and their coordinates, the following formula determines the slope of a line containing these points. So we have M is our slope. We'll talk about vertical change over horizontal change. Maybe you've heard that phrase rise over run, but here's that formula, right? Y sub two minus Y sub one, X sub two minus X sub one. So change in Y's, right? The difference in Y's in ratio to the differences in your X's. And in math, we tend to use the letter M for slope. When we get to stats, and we will do some stats in here, we'll, we'll use the letter B. All right, so here we go. Find the slope of the line that passes through negative five, eight, and negative three, negative nine. Now, I don't care which one you call x1, y1, and x2, y2. I'm actually gonna show you this both directions, just so you can see that we get the same answer either way. But for right now, let's call this point our first one, and this one our second one, only because that was how they were listed. So if I wanted to find the slope, Again, it's a ratio, change in y over change in x. So let me do y2 minus y1, that would be negative nine minus eight. And then if I do x2 minus x1, that will be negative three minus, and be careful, you're gonna subtract a negative five. So ultimately, when I do this slope, I get negative 17 over positive two. Okay, great. Now I just want to show you what this would look like if I labeled these the other direction. So let's say you felt like, you know, getting a little crazy on a Friday night and saying, well, you know what? This one's going to be x2, y2, and this one's going to be x1, y1, all right? As I've said before, we're going to go rogue. Okay, no problem. Let's take a look at the slope formula. So if I'm going to go y2 minus y1, I will have a minus a negative nine up here, and then I will have negative five minus a negative three on the denominator. Okay, great. So I'm gonna get 17 on the top on my numerator and negative two on the bottom. Well, those fractions are the same. And this is just as good a time of any to show you the three ways that you can write a negative fraction, and they all mean the same thing. So you can write negative 17 halves, right? You can write 17 over negative two, or you can put the negative out in front of the fraction and just write negative and then 17 over two. All right, and just so I'm being clear, this negative is supposed to be in the numerator here. So you can put your negative symbol in the numerator, in the denominator, or out in front, and all three of these fractions are equal to each other. For me personally, I usually either write it, like this is probably my most popular way that I write it for, for me, and then this is number two. I don't write the negative in the denominator as often. That's probably the least common version that I personally use. But feel free to use any of those three. All right, if I scooch the page up, this is a review of all of those forms of the line that you should have learned at some point in your math career. And again, I'm not expecting you to remember this right now, but it should seem familiar and you should take some time to review it if you need it. So we have y equaling mx plus b, by far the most popular version of the line, slope intercept form. Slope is m, the y intercept, take note, it has an x coordinate and a y coordinate. All right, so you would use this when the slope and the intercept can be easily identified and used quickly to graph the equation. Right, and then we have the point slope form, also pretty popular. This is more popular in calculus. I think this tends to be more popular in algebra and stats. Um, so we have y minus y sub one equaling m times x minus x sub one. Slope is m, line passes through the point x1, 
y1, right? This form is ideal for finding the equation of the line if the slope and the point of the line is known or two points on the line are known. And we'll use that in a little bit. Right, standard form, it's a little bit less popular. You use standard form, this ax plus by equaling c. You tend to use this when you have systems of equations. So maybe you remember solving problems like x plus 2y equals 7 and negative 3x minus y equals 4. And you did that either through substitution or linear combinations. But that's when your equations were in um, standard form. That's the most common use of standard form. But you, you can use it anytime you want. A, B, and C have to be integers, all right? And they have to be prime with respect to each other. So what I mean by that is you wouldn't have a 2, 4, and a 6 because you could just simplify that. The slope is the ratio negative A over B. The y-intercept is 0, C over B, right? And if you can find the x and y-intercept pretty easily, then, then you can use those to, to graph the equation and you would still have to calculate the slope. All right. For horizontal lines, they always come of the form y equals a number. When you're talking about a horizontal line, right, keep in mind, y's move you up and down. So if you have y equaling 7, that would move you 7 units above the origin. If you had y was equal to negative 2, that would move you 2 units below the origin. So these y equals, they're horizontal lines and they move up and down away from the origin. The slope on those is 0 the y-intercept is 0, comma, b, all right? And if the graph intersects only the y-axis, the y is the only variable in the equation. So there is no x in this equation. On the flip of that, if you had those vertical lines, all right, and I had mentioned at the very top, this equation from example four was the slopes for non-vertical lines. And that's because in vertical lines, the slope is undefined. You have an x-intercept at a0, and the graph is only going to intersect the a-axis, and the equation will only have the x variable in it. Okay, so hopefully some of that's coming back to you. We're going to work these, these forms of the equation, or forms of the linear equation, in example five. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.